Okay, welcome. Um, as I say, with every webinar, this webinar is being recorded, so uh, any questions you also have, um, please type them in the question box, and as I say, the recording I'll be sending out hopefully either today or tomorrow. But welcome to our webinar. You see the, uh, the topic there is um, how to secure your, uh, or how secure is your financial future? So I want you to think about that question. And then also I want you to think, well, how do you feel about that question? And thirdly, what are you doing about it? Okay, so that is uh, some food for thought. But um, let me, the reason why I'm asking those questions, for many people, their financial future is unknown. That is why it's important to consider the risks and be prepared if things do not go as, as, as planned. That old saying, um, you know, a plan for the worst, hope for the best, and uh, be pleasantly surprised. But um, the idea here is um, planning for your financial future can seem like a, a daunting task, but it doesn't need to be like that. Um, you know, in this webinar, my, my objective today is to discuss how to put money aside according to your priorities, number one. And number two, um, obviously, um, you know, I want you to be, call it creating awareness of your situation. Um, give you some choices. Um, we talk about mindset, so we'll be talking about your thoughts around that. And then ultimately, what's most important, and you'll see on the next slide when we bring up a quote, is um, to do something about it. Um, so first of all, here's my first disclaimer. I'm not a financial planner. I'm not there to give advice. But my, my objective with these webinars, as always, is um, education and understanding. So you can see the, the, the subtitle. Um, it's from Shakespeare, and it's from his play, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. It's actually from uh, Act 4, Scene 1. Have patience and endure. So if you had to apply Shakespeare's advice to your finances and realize that things are not going to change overnight, you can alleviate some of the stress you have put upon yourself. So I just want to take a step back uh, and lighten up uh, just for a second before we get into the heavy, heavy stuff. I'm going to get heavy and soft, heavy and soft this whole webinar. So yeah, the, on the next slide, you'll see there's quotes about three types of people. And I want to ask yourself, I want to ask you, what type of person are you? Let me get my mouse going there. Okay. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. And the realist adjusts the sales. So this is a quote from William Arthur Ward. So you can take it one step further. And there's a quote from Jim Rohn. Some of you know him as a personal development uh, philosopher. It is a set of the sales, not the direction of the wind, that determines which way we go. Now, the reason I've got these two quotes is the cause of your financial problems and the chance of them improving are both academic unless you do something to improve the situation yourself. So that is the main message with today's webinar. Take a, take a note, now we're going to get, as I say, get deep again, get heavy. In the medical industry, a pandemic is described as a, as a widespread outbreak of an infectious disease over a wide geographical area. Now, HIV or AIDS is an example of a pandemic that, is with the, that we're all still battling with. Um, while medicine has made great strides in making HIV in many ways a chronic condition um, that can be managed in many countries, the end of the pandemic, um, I still believe, is still a long, way to, a long way off. Now, how does that relate to the financial world? I think we're in a serious pandemic that is causing people to have serious financial problems and stress. Now, a lot of people are stressed, and one of the biggest causes of that stress comes from money. And that's how we tie it together. So what is causing this financial stress? Now, when I was doing my research, I came across, you can call it eight reasons or eight uh, causes um, for this financial stress. Um, number one, I believe, is high debt levels. Um, you can call it a debt bubble. But debt levels are rising faster than both incomes and assets. So high debt levels, number one. Number two, low savings rates. And this is also a bit worrying, where today's savings is pretty much non-existing. Obviously, you know, we talk about hovering around about 2 to 5%. The problem with that um, is that our financial future both relies on, a mac on, on the macro level as well as a micro level, um, and that's dependent on how much we save today. 
So going forward, we're not saving. That's a problem. Number three is volatile stock markets. Over the last few weeks or months, I've been talking about uh, there's lots of volatility, a lot of uncertainty in the market, especially around politics, both here in South Africa and um, overseas. But, uh, you know, stock markets do not just go up in a straight line. So they do experience cycles. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's something you have to, uh, to accept and live with it. Um, you can go one step further. And number four, look at the property market. You know, a few years ago, we had the property boom. Um, I remember getting the, involved in the property market and things like that. Um, you get to a stage where we had what we call stupid money, uh, where you can make money with little effort. You get to sit back and, um, and make money. But the problem with that is a lot of people with that property boom became over leveraged and over extended. And the challenge comes, it comes in. Whoops. There we go. That's what, that's one of the reasons why I had technical difficulties is, uh, is our software, our, the, um, antivirus software. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, with, with the whole property boom, people became over leveraged, over extended. And the problem with that is when the boom stops, uh, as we're seeing, and will slows down, that's where the problems start arising. Number five, and this is what I'm worried about, the demographics means uh, more fear. So the baby boomers, okay, these are people that are becoming more serious about their retirement in the next five to 15 years. Um, some money and finances becomes more relevant to them. Um, and the idea is that retirement, and I spoke about this also the last few webinars, is supposed to be the best years of our lives. But a lot of people are finding because of lack of planning or fewer pension options and lower savings rates and high debt levels, that's not going to happen like that. So that is number five. Number six, um, and I've, this is where I, where I also believe there's a, a big problem. Financial markets are becoming increasingly complex. Now, when I say financial markets, uh, sorry, here's another Oh, reminded about my software. Um, you know, the financial markets, when I talk about information and products and choice, and there's a lot of confusion, um, you know, out there. You just have to go Google, for example, the phrase personal finance, you'll get more than 78 million different responses in, in a 0 0.1 of a second. So, you know, the problem is we have a ridiculous amount of information, um, and too much information is not always so good. So, you know, that's number one. And number two, we have a lot of conflicting information. And number three, uh, we have a lot of opinions, but not fact. So, and that's also creating, as I say, a lot of confusion in the market. So we have also a lot of financial products. And I'll be talking about all our financial products at PSG Wealth offers. We've got nine different financial products. Um, people are becoming more paralyzed uh, and not making important decisions about, about the, about the money. So, and then obviously the last thing you're always looking at, you know, information, what information do you trust? And secondly, um, who do you know you can trust? So <laughs> those are some of the things you can look at. And second last, and this is something that's very close to my heart, is there's no formal education on money. You know, we talk about financial literacy, and I'm always punting Robert Kiyosaki's books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and things like that. Now, who's teaching you about money? And that's why we have these webinars, you know. Yeah, it lies the root of the problem. There's little formal education, and when I talk about formal education, formal financial education in the school system. Um, there's also even less in the workplace. So a lot of people are turning to their family and their friends, and I always, I always say, you know, people are turning to their broke neighbor to ask for advice, and I hope you're not doing that. So the challenge today is um, uh, you need to educate yourself. Um, and... And that's something I'm very really passionate about, is to educate yourself. And number eight, and we're seeing us more and more now, people cashing out their retirement funds. And that's the whole idea. You know, the reason for having retirement funds is for retirement. Um, so a lot of people are cashing out right now because of underlying problems, be it they, they've lost their jobs, uh, there's some other financial emergency, some medical emergency, whatever the case might be, some other hardship. But bottom line, you know, tapping into your retirement funds or, you know, by liquidating it is one of the, you know, it can do more harm than good down the line. So those are just some eight of the causes I believe that are causing a lot of financial stress. So what are the current situation? I have touched on already. So, you know, we can step, a, step back a bit and become a bit more positive again. You know, we're not strangers to financial problems. I, I saw a stat the other day that four out of five adults have faced economic insecurity at some time, point during their lives. Four out of five. In other words, that means that 80% of us have felt some worry or anxiety when associated to money. 
Now, that's what worries me. Now, we always think, ah, oh, we're talking about money. It might be the, low, the lower earners, the lower and middle class. But, um, you know, majority of people are fitting into this boat. Okay, so <laughs> it's quite scary. So the current situation, and I mentioned this quite a few slides before, people are not making ends meet, high debt levels, people are broke, not enough savings and things like that. So on the positive side, you know, it might be a cliche, but when it comes to your health, you have everything. Uh, so I'm just taking a step back and uh, just giving you a bit of a other context. You know, don't sacrifice your health for for success. Don't, um, and this is what's also close to my heart. Don't miss your kids growing up uh, or ignoring your spouse. And don't stop living at least one important dream every year. So money is not all of it, you know. But we'll get back to the in the nitty gritty just now. People always say that I'll come back to the stuff that truly matters someday. The problem with that is that eventually we run out of those some days. So success is much more than money. Freedom is more than financial. But you must pursue financial success with balance. And that's my point that I'm trying to make here. So you can look at the one side of the coin. You find people that are achieving a level of, of financial security and, and freedom. But also what you need to understand is, is it permanent and is it sustainable? So there's a small, call it a handful of people that, you know, if you had to ask them, and these are the people that are financially healthy and they have a budget and a plan and all that kind of stuff, their financial future secure, they, they found that 10% of people on that other side of the spectrum, uh, they fell into that bracket, they found that the biggest regret uh, was being too cheap and not allowing themselves to enjoy their money. So if they don't do it all over again, they enjoy their money and spend a bit more freely. So just gives you some insight there. What is the ideal situation? So the ideal situation is, you know, as I say, money can't buy your happiness, but they say, uh, uh, oh, this is going to pop up the whole time. Sorry about this. You know, <laughs> money is close to, you know, is rated the same as air. So the idea is that, you know, we were, we we're going to talk about uh, uh, strategies and things like that, but this is what I believe are four main things that, uh, that we want to look at. Whoops, sorry, let me go back here. Different investment vehicles. And you see that we've got a tractor, we've got a boat, we've got a truck and things like that. The idea is to have, you know, all of us have different financial objectives, be it, or outcomes. And I believe in setting money aside for certain things, different, call it different jars, emergency fund, your ch children's education fund. I personally have a personal development fund. You might have put money aside for a holiday fund overseas. Um, you want to set, obviously, a lot of your money aside for a retirement, but also you want to plan towards that new car, new home, and things like that. So in that context, also, it's being aware of the risk involved in all those different uh, um, investment vehicles, and we'll talk about it in the next few slides. The growth prospects, or in other words, the returns around that. So it's the returns and risk work hand in hand. The higher the, the returns, the higher potential risk, being aware of that. And also, all those different financial objectives have a time horizon, so a term. So that also dictates what kind of investment vehicle you're going for. Yeah, we're talking about diversification. And we've spoken about in past a few in past webinars, especially when it comes to shares, for example, you want to spread the risk. So we're talking about having a portfolio between eight and twelve shares spread spread across three to five different sectors. You can go one step further. You look at all these different different baskets. We are talking about asset allocation. So yes, we are talking a lot about the one asset class, what I call paper assets, which is your unit trust and shares and everything else that we're talking about today. Uh, but we also talk about physical property, commodities, and business physical businesses that you are out there involved with. Um, Financial planning, and this is some of it we're talking about today, and there's three phases. You can talk about building wealth, preser preserving wealth, and extending it, or I talk about protecting wealth. And that's all part of your financial plan. And the idea is that ultimately I believe in having a financial advisor helping us work out all these things. Now, I'd rather be safe than sorry, and that's what, what, what I mean by that. And then thirdly, ultimately – I believe if you put all these things in place, you want to be in a situation where you have peace of mind. And as an acronym, sleep well at night or SWAN, the idea that you have a financial, a secure financial future. And that's the gist of today's presentation. Okay. So how do we get there? So what, you know, what are some of the strategies in tough times? You know, if you read the newspapers or you turn on the television, you'll get overwhelming evidence that times are tough. Yeah. <laughs> 
I believe first the first thing is I don't switch on the television. I don't read the newspapers. I'm aware of that already. You know, and we know that unemployment is rising and debt is rising and credit is difficult to come by and South Africans are not saving. You know, we know the economy is tight. But, um, you know, and, I, and again, I say that we know there's uncertainty because of local and global pol uh, uh, politics and I know there's market volatility. So what can we do? So what do we do? My philosophy um, in tough times is to control the things that I can control. Yeah, you'd be surprised how much of a difference, both financially and emotionally, how so, some of the small things will make a big difference. So as I say, I don't watch the news, I don't listen to the news, uh, I don't read the newspapers. Yes, I do read the Business Day and things like that, but I stay away from the horrors and things like that. So the idea, yeah, and this is something that I'm trying to teach my children. Yeah, I call it five steps to securing your financial future. So financial education, as I say, very close to my, my heart. I call it uh, financial literacy. Um, you know, many people don't understand finances, you know, how credit works, and obviously the, the impact that might have on the financial well-being. Uh, what is financial literacy, if I put it that way? Um, it's coming together of financial credit and debt management and the knowledge that is necessary to make financial responsible decisions. Now, no one teaches you this stuff at school. As I say, they don't teach us in the workspace, uh, in the workplace. So it all becomes an integral part of our lives. So that's why I believe it starts. And that's where you have this, uh, I call it, uh, I have a passion to learn about financial literacy. And then from there, I move on to what we call investment philosophy. You know, it's setting that they're having the right mindset. And again, it's where the Robbie Kiyosaki books have helped me a lot. You know, I reached that poor bit there, told me the, it taught me the difference between an asset and a liability. Asset puts money in my pocket, liability takes money out of my pocket. I've learned about cash flow. You know, the wealthy people buy assets so they can get income from or cash flow from those assets. So that's what I mean by that. So you know, the big difference between the rich and poor, I believe to a large extent, is the mindset towards money. So we talk about earning money, and this is working for you money, and I call that active income, which is different to um, investing money. In other words, getting your money to work for you, and, or passive income. And I believe passive income, if you have passive income, is um, your first step towards financial freedom, where you're living off the, off the, the income from your investments. You don't have to work for your money. Okay. So, you know, you can be technically sound about everything you specialize in, but what's important is having that right mindset. And a part of it also, I believe, is getting rid of bad debt. We're talking about good debt and bad debt. Good debt, we spoke about other people's money before, is leveraging off that, but also bad debt is the credit cards and the overdraft and things like that. You want to get rid of that as soon as possible. And then fourth step, I believe, is building a cushion. And we spoke about it just now, one of those financial objectives is to have in place, I call it emergency fund. And they say between three and six months um, income or living expenses, that's where it all starts. It just gives you that peace of mind. Something happens, you lose your job or you incapacitate. Said, yes, we got these income protection plans in place, but this is what, another way of, of doing that. And the first step, obviously, pl planning your financial matters, depending on your, you know, have long and short term goals. The idea here is to be in a situation where uh, I'm marrying up my long-term goals with a with a financial product. So it's a term and things like that. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. I'm, I'm going along here very quickly because obviously I know some of you guys are on lunch and things like that. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to do, get a, get across of this slide, yeah, discipline investing is the key to long-term wealth creation. And it all starts off, and I believe there's no shortcuts. So it all starts by investing today. Um, and then having this in place, that's one side. And the other side is learning about the different investment vehicles. So we're going to look at a range of, of, of financial products that PSG offers. Um, and the idea is that, you know, with PSG Wealth, uh, we offer you all the support, number one. And number two, what, what's, what's important, you can learn about these products online in your own time and things like that. So it's convenient. But also, ultimately, if all these financial products, it's one login, one platform. Okay. So let's talk about... And you can talk about low risk uh, uh, stuff here. So in the in the sense uh, we talk we talk about the uh, corporate saver, not having everybody. Yeah, we're talking about a hundred thousand rand uh, minimum investment. Um, and you'll see on the next few slides just now the advantages of these different uh, products. But you can see the costs. Uh, obviously, it's not brokerage, but there'd be a management fee. 
a lot of us that are on this webinar would start with unit trust. So uh, that's another avenue. And there's a wide range. There's more than 50 uh, unit trusts to choose from. PSG alone, PSG Asset Management, we've got nine different funds to help you get started. So uh, there you can start with a 500 rand debit order. And obviously the advantage of a debit order is where you talk about rent cost, uh, long, rent cost averaging and things like that. Okay. And you'll see on the next slide, within unit trust, there's a whole lot of other things that fall into it. We call them wrappers that you can use unit trust as a base. Then local shares, if those of you a bit more advanced, I suggest minimum investment there's 10,000, and then obviously offshore. So this is what a lot of people will get involved with. Okay, go to the next slide. As I say, within the uh, unit trust, we, I'm calling them unit trust here on our website, we call it voluntary investment plans or VIPs. Uh, you get various different wrappers. So first of all, retirement annuity and tax-free, these are tax-efficient uh, investment vehicles. So what's great about uh, uh, both these product, products is that, again, 500 rand debit order, minimum 20,000 rand lump sum of RAs, um, tax-free investment plan, uh, 500 rand a month or maximum of 6,000 rand a year, with maximum of uh, um, 500,000 over your lifetime. Uh, endowments, we spoke about endowments last week. Great for a high tax uh, individual. Reservation funds, this is once you, you know, you're either changing jobs or about to retire, you move your funds out of a pension or provident fund into a preservation fund. And then lastly, once you're in those preservation funds, is drawing a fund from a living annuity. So these are just some vehicles that are wrapped as more capital, uh, more tax efficient. And then lastly, obviously, this is for. Um, the people a bit more advanced, um, I believe uh, the advanced investors, uh, and by the way, let me just go back here, uh, yeah, I'm talking about 0.5%, that is for non-PSG funds. Um, the PSG funds is 0.2% plus VAT, 0.228%, so you can see, I'm just highlighting it there for you. So going back to the, the more advanced stuff, um, this is more derivatives, call it that, and this is for the people that I believe that, you know, you want to take a portion of your of your funds or your capital and uh, put it into derivatives. Uh, this is if you want to speculate, number one, which I believe is the fun part. You know, watching a long-term portfolio it can be boring. This is where you can have some fun in the market. But also I believe it's for those of you that want to hedge yourself. So you anticipate some market correction. Um, yes, you want to hedge yourself. This is where you do, do that. And also remember, I'm talking about asset allocation. We're only talking about paper assets today. This is all paper assets. You want to hit yourself in physical property and other stuff too. Okay, so I hope that makes a bit more sense to you. What are the um, what will this do for you? As I say, there's a wide range of um, products. Some of you might be overwhelmed. You think, wow, a lot of information. But uh, as I say, please review this presentation when you do get it. But uh, if you look at the advantages, the corporate saver, you earn a competitive interest rate. Uh, unit trust, you've got a wide range of underlying instruments to choose from. One of the big advantages of retirement annuities, yes, it's an investment vehicle, but also up to 27.5% of your contributions that you pay to the retirement annuity is tax deductible. Okay, so um, that's something to look about, look uh, look onto. And then add on to that, once you've got your RA in place, you can add in what they call a tax-free investment plan. And the advantage of this is that ultimately pay no tax on capital gains, dividends, or interest. So, um, but you're still getting that growth. Endowments helps you to save with discipline, and obviously offers you the tax benefit for, for the higher income uh, taxpayer. Preservation funds, as I said before, also helps you preserve and accumulate your, your, your pre-tax savings before retirement. Living annuities, this is where you select the level of income uh, that you want to receive, and obviously how your retirement savings are to be invested, so it gives you that flexibility. Um, when it comes to local and offshore shares, obviously local shares, our whole objective is capital appreciation, as well as dividend income and growth in that income. And you know, I like to focus on quality undervalued stocks. When you're looking at offshore, the, my main objective for going offshore, uh, the advantage of that is geographical ge uh, diversification. So I have access to 35 different markets. We're talking about CFGs and single stock futures there. The main thing here is it's highly capital efficient and a very cost effective way to gain a leverage exposure to shares. We talk about index futures, so you want to trade the index, the Aussie and the Omi. 
It's also a great way to have leverage exposure to trading the top 40 index. And then currency futures, again, also having leverage exposure to eight different currency pairs from, relative to the red. Okay, so what are the, some of the questions you guys might have um, that I'm anticipating? What are the risks? And there's a whole lot of risks. And they're all the same in the sense that, um, you know, your investment returns may not perform as expected, number one. And number two, your investment is linked to the market value of the underlying instruments chosen. And it's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee. So the big thing here is control. Do you have control of your investment? That's something you have to consider. So it's important to ensure that you're comfortable with the level of investment risk, number one. And number two, I sincerely recommend again that a financial investor, a financial advisor, excuse me, help you make the appropriate choices. Okay. So when it comes to, especially more the, 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 um, the risky stuff like uh, uh, derivatives, single stocks and CFDs, there's always the two sides of the coin. We're talking about risk management, which is stop loss, and money management, which is position sizing. So that gives you a measure of control. But also remember, ultimately, again, I want to reinforce asset allocation. We're talking about paper assets in, in today's context. Okay, so guys, um, let me see what kind of questions you guys have. I've gone through this very quickly. Um, oh. So guys, it looks like the, the presentation is hung, hung because of this stuff popping up all the time. Uh, that's amazing. All this. Okay, I'll have to just do the recording for you guys again and then uh, send it out to you guys. Okay, uh, nice little technical problems. Okay, so just to wrap it up, if you guys can still hear me, um, in conclusion, the whole idea, see this is why I think we're having these problems today. Uh, in conclusion, I believe is, you know, your financial future is unknown. It's important to consider the risks. Be prepared. Plan for your financial future. Put money aside. But ultimately, I believe there's four things. You know, awareness of the current situation, uh, your current financial situation, the choices you have. You can either ignore your situation or delay it. But I believe that you must do something about it. You know, talk to someone. Uh, and also what's important is your thoughts, your mindset. You know, it's important to have a positive mindset, a positive attitude. And then plan and prepare Ask for advice, research, study, uh, and learn. And ultimately, what the most important thing is action. Do something about it. Do that, and then maybe consider, as I say, unit trust as a, as a starting point. Okay. Uh, you know, I believe on the other side of the coin, you know, you can have that negative spiral, negative attitude. You can always play victim. I believe you'd rather be a, a victor. Okay. So, guys, uh, <laughs> What's the next steps, next action steps? You know, register for the wealth, the PhD Wealth Unit Trust today. Um, that's one of the options you have. But you go to our website, you have all those different products available to you. Sit down and answer those questions for yourself today. When you get this presentation, go through all those questions. Um, and hopefully I've just planted some seeds for you today. And um, hopefully you found it beneficial. Okay. So guys, from my side again, I appreciate you being on this webinar. Until next week, uh, next week, by the way, uh, we're talking about um, are you in need of asset allocation? So we're talking about offshore investing um, and opportunities there. Again, I'm highlighting asset allocation. Okay. So, guys, from our side, thank you very much. There's my um, contact details, any questions you have, and there's obviously um, our disclaimer. Remember, I'm not giving any advice today. The idea is for education and understanding. The guys from my side, thank you very much for being on this webinar. My sincere apologies for all the technical hassles and technical hassles still happening. Um, until next week, all the best. Bye for now.